Welcome back everyone to another episode of All About Mechanics. Now today is the final version 2 dungeon, then we're moving on to the DLCs. Now today is going to be Crypt of Hearts 2. I'm going to be using the same setup as before with one tank, one healer, one stamina DPS and one magicka DPS making sure that no rolls are left out. Of course we're going to do it on veteran difficulty and I'm going to show you the hard mode as well. Here we go. Okay, so when you first enter this dungeon, you'll probably notice that it's the same layout as Crypt of Hearts 1. However, there's a little bit of a twist. We do go one direction that we don't normally go, and we also have an extended part at the end where the last boss is. But the rest of it is pretty much the same, although the enemies are slightly different and uh, more in number, shall we say. Now, to start off with, this room is absolutely immense. It's really, really large, lots and lots of stuff. So make sure your tank kind of grabs the Atronarchs really, really early on and holds them in the middle while all the rest of the enemies are chained in. Be aware that there are lots of casters in here, so they will need interrupting from time to time. So if you see anything healing or channeling a nasty ability, make sure you bash it or interrupt it if you've got a long range interrupt as well. So any archers, mages, healers, any of those. The rest, pull them in as quick as you can. There's a lot to deal with here, so your tanks are going to, of course, um, struggle to start with pulling stuff in. They'll probably get like two or three ads at a time and then there'll be a break because they've got to sustain just as much as you. So just be patient. Don't stand in stupid and wait for your tank to pull everything in so you can get rid of it. Now, the Atronarchs must be turned away from the group, I might add, because they do have a nasty um, cleave effect or a frontal AoE, and you don't want to get caught by that as a DPS or a healer, so just be really, really careful. The next room before we jump down the hole is clustered with enemies. Let your tank go first, otherwise you're going to get jumped by everything at once. As you can see, there's loads there. A simple uh, claws, talons, chaining up of enemies or CC to kind of hold their feet in place is all you need to kind of manage with the first ones. But again, make sure you drag in those ranged DPS because they're really, really nasty and they do need interrupts. So pull everything into the middle where you first start off and you should be just fine. Make sure the DPS hold up some decent AoE to make sure that you dispatch the enemies quite quickly. And make sure if there's any two-handers, you block if they come after you. Don't run away, just block. Otherwise, you're going into the air and you're going to die. The first boss is a little bit tricky. He's not difficult per se, but he has got a couple of nasties which will prevent you from doing a lot of damage to him. And that is in the form of a negate bubble. So you have to be very, very careful with this. Pull the boss into the center of the room, grab the adds as well, and stack them all up nice and neat. And you should be just fine. Make sure you burn them as much as you can with area of effect and interrupt while they're healing. However, the boss will fire out a nasty heavy attack, which the tank will have to block. If it's on the DPS or a healer, again, just block it and you'll be fine. But when the negate bubble lands, be very, very careful. If you're a tank using magic abilities, you probably don't want to stand inside of it. And if you're a DPS, you definitely don't want to stand inside of it because your ultimates, your synergies, and your magic abilities will not work. But if you're stamina, you can kind of get stuck in as long as you don't stand on the edges. In the meantime, the health of the boss relates to how many adds you will get. So as he goes down in health, more adds will enter the room, so pace it. I mean, if you go for a full burn, you're gonna have a room full of enemies. So take your time, pace it, bring the adds in, burn them down again, and then move back onto the boss. As you can see here, I'm trying to focus the adds, not the boss. Otherwise, you get in trouble. There's a couple of two-handers that you have to be aware of, and there's a couple of healers as well, so make sure you interrupt them. Once you get to the low, low health of it, um, then you won't just have to deal with healers, you will also have to deal with an Atronarch. As you can see, he just came out of the portal, tank should grab this and turn away from the group straight away you can chain in these healers but they do have a habit of running so if you want to focus those separately you can fail that bring them in together they're not too problematic they don't really hurt that much but they do heal a lot so they can be a bit of a pain when it comes to trying to take enemies down because they just keep pumping their health back up again so again this room is all about control keep the boss turned away from the group keep the atros turned away and interrupt the healers as and when you can now the next pull is a load of spiders on the floor, they don't have a lot of health so AoE will dispatch these quite quickly. If you don't have loads of damage don't worry but be careful that they will try and feed off of each other so if you see them doing that make sure you interrupt. The Ogrim needs to die quickly and if he doesn't he will beat his chest and spawn two adds from underneath him. At that point in time we beat him quite quickly and that didn't happen but the next one it will. So we'll show you this again. Do not stand in front of his face as a DPS because if you are there he will charge you and sometimes knock you on the ground which will really really hurt. Again, AoE on the ground, turn the Ogrim away from the group as the tank, and once he beats his chest, look out for the adds. So it's a different variations of the ad combinations, but there's always two. This time we've got two um, dual wielders, which do spin, they steal Tornado, they do a nasty teleport attacks, so be very, very careful. 
The tank needs to grab these as soon as possible, and you should focus one and then the other just to get them down nice and quick while keeping AoE on the ground. Sometimes there's a healer, which needs to be interrupted. Sometimes there's a two-hander. So as soon as an Ogrim dies, make it your habit to block and see what you're up against. This boss is quite simple. Keep her dead center in the room. Now, it's very, very important that you don't dance because otherwise you get in trouble. If you're in front of her face, as you saw that lightning just went out in front where the tank was, you'll get hit by that, so don't. And periodically through the fight, this will happen. You can see that massive, massive shock um, AoE going around the room. That is going to lock onto one target. Could be the tank, could be the healer, could be one of the DPS. If it's you, just kite it around the room. By that, I mean just move with it so it follows you and keep it away from the group. Don't run through the middle because you'll kill them. Also, during the fight, you will get lots of spiders, which you have to deal with. Keep them in the middle. Let the tank control them. Don't panic and keep the boss turned away from the group. Occasionally, also, she will turn on one of the members of the group. As you saw, then I got cocooned into a nasty uh, web cocoon and someone has to synergize it to break me free. Now, as you can see, we're not dancing around the room. You can see the kite over there. The healer's taking the AoE away with her so he doesn't die. And we're all standing still. The reason for that is she will choose a target to cocoon and if she turns to the direction of you, you can see who's got it. If you're all stacked on each other's feet and she turns around, who is she going to get? You don't know. If you've all got your own place, you can very clearly see who's got it and you can very clearly decide who's going to go over and set them free. It's really, really simple. So position yourself in one place, beat the boss down and then carry on to kiting around the room if you get the nasty AoE. This room is very, very simple. Tank runs in the middle, pins everything down and hold on to these two guys here. These big ones, they have a lot more health and they do hit very, very hard. So the tank has to focus those two large ones. Of course, my weapon charges have run out. Now, the alteration to this dungeon from version 1 is that we now go to the left, not the right. Because we have to take a different path to get to basically the same place. But the story is slightly different. So we do have an additional boss in here. Um, this one has a nasty fear mechanic, which gets people a lot and there is a bug with it where you can actually get stuck in the wall so you don't want to do that so first of all come in and take down these skeletons bunch them up get as much area effect down as possible they're very low health they're not too much of a problem but if you don't get rid of them quick obviously they can throw out nasty aoe's in front of them and you can get overwhelmed a little bit so just get them down as fast as you can now you hit these two buttons at the same time if you can help it and the door will open you can see two lighthouse looking things there or whatever they're supposed to be. Statues, there you go, they're called statues, brilliant. Now this door will open up and a big nasty skeleton boss will come out. He can be stack and burned, quite simply. Turn him away from the group as the tank and you will get some skeletons in the room as well. Air of effect should take care of them, but he will turn on a member of the group, release a nasty red spirit and he'll fear one of the members of the group. That can be quite nasty because if you don't control the skeletons and someone get feared backwards, they could go running into the army of um, undead and die. So the tank needs to make sure that he holds the boss very very still and chains in the skeletons as and when they can. Otherwise you will get overwhelmed with them and you will die. So very simple stack and burn with mechanics that the tank can basically control but if you start running around the room then you're in trouble. So pay very very close attention to the ads and make sure you break free of that fear. He does have a heavy attack, it's not that bad but if you don't block it you're gonna obviously take some damage. So just make sure you block that. The next room's actually got a couple of chests occasionally. If you look to the left and the right as you come in, you can see like there's these uh, rather large monuments. Behind them, there's usually a treasure chest. So just bear in mind that you can find some shinies in there, especially if you're looking for ebon and stuff like that, because a lot of people farm this for that particular set. Now, the next room is not really that bad. We've got a few ad pulls, but you do, again, have to pay very close attention to the big ones. There'll be a couple of archers in here. You have to deal with those. Make sure you pull them in as the tank, chain them up in with the Ogrim and kind of keep them all close together if you can. Failing that, make sure that they are interrupted. They do throw out some nasty acid spray or arrow spray type abilities, so you have to be really careful for those. Don't stand in stupid, and of course, get that Ogrim down. If you don't kill him before he beats his chest, he will spawn two adds, which I think we do have happen here. Yes, we do. Block straight away. As you can see, there's a two-hander. He is horrible. I blocked barely took any damage. If I hadn't have blocked, I'd have been thrown into the air and I would have probably died because the other guy was on me as well. Make sure the tank grabs them really fast and if they are on you, as you just saw, don't run away. Just block and let your tank grab the aggro. It's not a stressful situation if you don't make it one. Now the next room is where we killed the Leviathan in Crypt of Hearts 1 and we are going to meet him again. But first of all, we've got a couple of groups of adds. So this first pull, just 
pin them down. As you can see, our tank held them all together there. Stay out of stupid, of course, and interrupt the healers. Area of effect damage should be more than enough for these, but watch out for the uh, dual wield guy there because he does have a nasty spin and teleport strike occasionally. So make sure your tank aggroes the big stuff first. The next pull, of course, grab the Atronarch first off, otherwise you're in trouble. And then after that, make sure you can continue to grab the bigger adds, including these two-handers. The two-handers are nasty. Interrupt the archers, interrupt the healers, grab the two-handers as the tank. Also, as the DPS and the heals, make sure that you're paying attention to the two-handers' actions, because if they do heavy attack, you do want to be blocking. Try and avoid the face of the Atronarch, however. Now, the Lambrus twins are here. They are the bosses in Crypto Hearts 1. They do have the same mechanics as before, one heavy attacks, one puts stuff on the ground, they can have the light in AoE occasionally, just make sure you watch your feet, get your tank to turn them away onto this little rock pile here, and just burn them down with basic AoE. You don't need to use any ultimates for this, you only need to get one of them to zero health. Once you've done that, then the boss is going to be spawned, so you can see that they're now channeling, they disappear, they go into the middle, they kind of hug up, have a little prayer, and then the Leviathan pops out of the ground. Now, instead of like he was before, where he runs around the room in circles, he will pretty much stay here as long as you plant him here. He won't be moving around the room, but he hits like a truck in comparison to how he did before. Big AoEs, which you need to stay out of, as you can see, you can dodge roll that, and then adds will spawn throughout the fight. Now, if you've got enough area of effect damage, these will be not much of a problem, but the tank does need to make sure that he or she grabs them and gives them a quick taunt to make sure they don't run off. Or you can use talons or any form of CC to hold them there as well. This is the Alambrus uh, twin mechanic. Remember the blue one puts those of light on the ground. You just dodge left and right to stay out of the nastiness. That applies here. So just make sure you're paying attention to that and just stay out of stupid. Make sure the tank is always keeping him faced one way so that the heavy attacks can be blocked and the cleaves can be avoided by the group. See, get out of the big AoE and back in again. That's the other Alambrus twin mechanic, the big fire AoE on the ground from version one. And that's all you really have to do. Just keep him still and focus on it. Now, when he gets very low health, he didn't actually do it then, but sometimes he will kind of channel a eruption effect and lots and lots of fire will be placed on the floor in big circles surrounding him. When that happens, all you need to do is simply stay out of it or make sure your healer is really going for it as far as the heals are concerned. And then you shouldn't have any trouble getting him down. Apart from that, it's basically a stack and burn fest. It's not too difficult at all. As long as you've got plenty of mitigation, he doesn't hit that hard. So wiggle your feet, stay out of his face, and don't get caught by the stomp. Ogrim over here, same as before. Once he beats his chest, two adds will come out, so you can either get him down if you've got enough damage and it won't happen, or if it does happen, then just you continue to kill the adds afterwards. Remember to block once these go down, because sometimes a two-hander comes out. This time we got lucky, we got two spinnies instead. They will steal tornado, they will teleport strike, so make sure that the tank grabs them as quick as possible, and that if you do get in trouble and they are on you, that you block. Our tank, however, has gone to Spain because he's decided to run through the room and didn't realize the ads were coming out. But in this room, as you go through, there's two Atronarchs and plenty of ads, so you can grab those, pin them in the middle of the room, and then chain everything else in as and when you can. You can throw ultimates in at this point if you really want to, but failing that, just pace your damage, keep plenty of AoE on the ground, and interrupt any archers, mages, or healers as you need to if they channel any abilities. You can stack and burn the majority of this, um, as long as the Atronarchs are not on the group. If they are on you and you're a DPS or a healer, just be sure that you're blocking until the tank takes it off you. Again, if you want the tank to get aggro, don't run around the room. Bring it to the tank. This room actually had a boss in it in part one, but it doesn't here. It's just a massive, massive ad pull. So if you're going for XP or you just want a completion and you want to make sure you kill everything, there's sometimes a chest in there as well, so go for it. You can skip that part, but you don't have to. Now the next corridor has a couple of portals with um, nasties coming through, so you have to be careful here. Make sure that you get your AoEs down in the corridor and the tank can position everything in the middle. Interrupt the archers, again, make sure they don't put any nasty arrow sprays on the group. And watch for the two-handers, they come rushing out of that portal, they generally try to run after the healer. But if they're after you, just block until the tank has gained aggro. They're not a problem if you block. If you don't block, that's when you get in trouble. So always be aware that whenever these spawn, you should be blocking until the tank has control. Atronarch, we've seen that already. Interrupt the casters, of course. Turn him away from the group. Burn him down. Not a problem. Stand in his face, you'll die. The tank should be the only one standing in his face. Now, the next room is actually quite fun. If you bolt down the corridor here, you can get all the adds at once. And if you're an experienced group, you can just drop everything on them. But 
be careful. The tank should always be running ahead here, always go first and grab these as quick as possible because they come bombing out from the right hand side, there's loads of them. But if you get there quick enough, you can CC them all at once. As you can see, talons are down, everything is stuck. Interrupt casters and block that two-hander. The tank must grab the two-hander, that is a priority. From behind you, you'll get some more skeletons as well. They're a bit sneaky, but they're not really too much of a problem. But again, area effect down on the ground. Taunch on the two-hander ASAP and interrupt anything that's channeling. Now this is tricky. This, treat it as a clock face. One person on each quarter of an hour. So 12 o'clock, three o'clock, six o'clock, nine o'clock. Each person needs their own space and you must stick to it. If there's an AOE on the ground, of course, make sure you move out of it. Just move your feet a little bit and you'll be fine. If she channels, make sure she interrupts and the AOEs won't land on the ground. But when this happens, spin your camera, look behind you. You must get out of your AOE and you mustn't overlap with another. Your clock face location, whether you're 12, three, six, or nine, is where you must be looking. If your AOE lands on another one with you inside of it and they double up, you are dead. If you double up on somebody else's, you are dead. So make sure, again, very, very clearly, you all have your own position. 12, three, six, and nine. When you get sucked into the middle, spin your camera, look on your quarter of an hour, where you can position yourself where you're not going to overlap a circle. The physical circle can overlap, but you mustn't. So your body must not be overlapping the extra one. It's very, very important. That was a very quick fight, but um, and it can be even quicker. You can actually burn it really, really fast and not have to deal with that mechanic at all if you're in a very experienced group. But most are not, so that can be tricky. Remember the clock face. This boss is not too hard. But he does have a condition for hard mode. The condition is four ghosts must be alive when he hits 35% and come to this, this sword. He tries to pick it up. When he picks it up, same animation as what I just did. When he picks it up, four ghosts must be alive. So we deliberately leave them alive. Now this boss will fire out Lich Crystals from the ground based on your position. One each, so spread out and get your own space. He'll also throw a skull at one random enemy. As he did there, he hit AJ in the face. Now, the reason we're spread out, not only to get rid of the Lich Crystal so they're not all stacked up, is so we can see who's getting hit with the skull as well. He will aim at one person. If it's you, dodge roll, and you'll be fine. He will teleport occasionally as well with a really large blast area of effect underneath him, so make sure you're not near him when he does it. Lich Crystals are easy to avoid. They pop up, you step out. He teleported, get out of it. That will one-shot you if you have low resists. Apart from that, the rest of the time is pretty much rinse, repeat. Watch out for the skull, dodge roll it, didn't dodge roll, um, if you're low resist that'll kill you. And then during the fight, every so often he will go to the other side of the room, to one of these grills, and he will release two spirits. This is the tank's job, do not have high damage on those adds, they're very very low, they will die quickly. The trick here, you saw the skull, dodge roll it, is to make sure that the tank takes the ghosts away, away from the boss, and you have to pace your damage, do not push him to 35% yet. So just avoid his mechanics. Stay out of Lich Crystals. Keep an eye on him. If he starts channeling, he's going to throw a skull at someone. As long as you're spread out, you can see who's going to cop it. And also, if he teleports, stay out of the big boom. You don't want to get caught. Little hits here and there are not going to kill you. But the skull will, the Lich Crystal will, and the big boom will as well. Now you can see he's gone to another grill. He's got two more ghosts out. There are four ghosts in the room right now. The tank can hold four ghosts and keep a taunt on the boss. Get out of that stuff and then you're fine. Now this is your window of opportunity. As long as there's four ghosts alive, you can kill the boss and push him down to 35%, 36 in fact. Now, when he's here, do not kill those ghosts. You have to wait until he has the sword. As soon as he's got it, kill everything. As you can see now, his hand is in the air, he's doing his business, kill everything. Now, once he's satisfied that he has obtained the sword, he will pin one member of the group in the air. He has a damage shield, and you have to take it off him by doing damage. Now, once the damage shield is off, the person who is stuck in the air can be released. They do have to take a synergy mind while they're in the air to make sure that they don't have a really, really negative effect when they hit the ground and die. Apart from that, now is your opportunity to kill him. He will jump from one member to the next doing a nasty heavy attack, so make sure you block if it's on you. But he will basically just repeat this for the rest of the fight. If the fight continues and you don't have very, very high damage, he will raise another person into the air and you'll have to beat his damage shield yet again. So pay very, very close attention to this. 
Anyone in the air, he needs to be beat on until the damage shield is off. If you are the person that's in the air, you need to be taking a synergy to make sure that you're not killed once you're dropped. So hopefully that helped, hopefully that wasn't too boring, and hopefully you now have a better understanding of how to approach that particular dungeon, especially the boss before last, because if you don't follow the clock face routine or tactic, if you like, it can be really, really tricky and people wipe on repeat, so be very careful. Anyway, first of all, thank you all very, very much for watching. I hugely appreciate the support, and if you are not subscribing, please do hit that button. It is free. Furthermore, if you want to help support the channel outside of YouTube, there are some links in the description for Patreon, Twitter, Facebook, and, of course, the website, zynodegaming.com. Not to mention, of course, I am also on Twitch, and I stream there every single night, 10 p.m. UK time. Once again, thank you all very, very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.